Hi, Jared here. I'm the Creative New Media Officer for the Calvin Smith Library at Case Western Reserve University. And you are a faculty member wondering, what is the best way to have my students watch videos as part of my class? Now, this is a difficult question. And the reason it's a difficult question is, is that much like textbooks are an assemblage of things that the publisher could get rights to, we often find ourselves in situations of compromise. And I only want to start here because I can't say, and this will make it easy for you, because that's not how this is going to work. The first thing that you might consider is what streaming services are available. And the answer is pretty much nothing when it comes to mainstream movies. So the question that people always ask is, is, oh, do we have Netflix for our students? And the answer is, Netflix doesn't make an educational licensing stream. You're not licensed to use Netflix in the classroom, and we're not licensed to be able to even buy Netflix and put it in our lab. It's the way it works. The other thing that is very tricky is that licenses for streaming movies, they fluctuate really, really quickly. It's here one month, it's gone the next, and there's usually no announcement. So even if I were to like take an entire list of movies and say, well, this one's here and this one's here and this one's here, that would change so frequently. There are a few places that you can stream for free. Vudu, uh, V-U-D-U dot com, which allows you to buy movies, has many movies available with commercials. And matter of fact, there's a lot of services out there where you can watch movies with commercials. But is it exhaustive? No. Is it predictive? No. So it's not really reliable to build a whole curriculum around streaming movies that exist somewhere on a free service or even on a paid service. And I hate to be that guy, but I am that guy because I'm just the bearer of bad news. Now, the library itself has a vast collection of DVDs, videotapes, and even some Blu-rays. So what do we do with those if we want our students to watch them as part of a curriculum? Well, the first thing that you could do is you could arrange for a viewing. That would basically mean that you would get a classroom, you would assign your students to be able to say, you will all watch the movie at the same place at the same time. If it's a DVD, that would probably be in your classroom. If it's a Blu-ray, we'll get back to it. If it's a VHS, it gets trickier because most of the classrooms don't have VHS players in them. So the real question is, is can you create a synchronous watching for your students? And a lot of people don't like that because admittedly, it is class time that you are now assigning. You may not want to even be the one to docent it. If you would say, I really want to do this, I just don't want to docent it, then what I'd recommend is that you appoint or assign or have one student be in charge of getting the film and hitting play on the film, and then you don't have to be there. That's been done before. We don't provide the classroom and we don't provide the docent. We just provide the movie. There are ways that we can put them on reserve in a way that would actually be useful for a synchronous watching. From an asynchronous perspective, if you want to make sure that the students watch it on their own, you need to be aware, we request that you be aware, that there are only three viewing stations in the library. Two of them are VHS and DVD. One of them is only international DVD. Now, the cool thing about our viewing stations are is that you can have up to two people watching them at the same time with wireless headphones, and you could probably get away with three people at the same time with wired headphones. It is bring your own headphones to the library. We don't lend headphones, but we do have a tutorial about how you can synchronize two pair of Bluetooth headphones to a TV at the same time. And that would take care of VHS and DVD. Now, the bad news is, is that let's say it takes two hours to watch a movie, the movie's on reserve. Now you've got everyone trying to schedule both when they're borrowing the movie and when they're gonna come and use the library and hoping there's open seats. As you can see, it doesn't work with the standard procrastination that students tend to run into. They wanna to wait to the last minute and run into problems there. The reason that we don't have Blu-ray players set up in the library right now, and one of the biggest questions was, how do people watch Blu-rays? A lot of computers don't have Blu-ray players on them. In the early days, we lent external Blu-ray players that you could plug into your laptop, and what we found is it's not easy. Configuring a Blu-ray player onto a laptop varies from operating system to operating system, and it involves software installation, and usually is just a pain in the butt. However, we did buy some external, standalone, they look like they look like laptops, but all they do is play DVDs and Blu-rays. 
and they've got a 14 inch display and you put the Blu-ray or the DVD right into it and you can watch it on this battery powered Blu-ray DVD player and those leave the library. Of course, now you've got the issue of if the Blu-ray player leaves the library, that means the Blu-ray needs to leave the library and now you've greatly reduced the number of hours that the unit, the, the item is available. We only have so many players and of course, we only have so many movies. So it kind of becomes a tricky one right there. The cool thing about this that you should know is, is that these DVD players have HDMI. So even though it's got a built-in screen and you don't need any computer whatsoever, you can use these to take a DVD or Blu-ray player to go and plug it into a large TV and have a group viewing. With VHS, it's literally going to be one or two at a time only in the library, unless you know of a classroom that's a VHS player that varies from place to place. And again, that only would work if you're doing a synchronous or group viewing at the same time. When it comes to the resources of these things, it's always challenging. If there's a movie that you need the library doesn't own, you can request that we purchase that movie. Frequently that's done. You would go through your research librarian and ask them if we can add this to the collection. It's good to research what we have. If a movie only exists on videotape and you'd like it on DVD or Blu-ray, you can make that request as well and maybe that'll help move the collection forward. We, we tend not to just replace all the VHS tapes with Blu-rays or DVDs because we don't really know what our people want and also what necessarily is available. If there's something in the collection that is VHS and you want it on DVD or Blu-ray and it doesn't exist, there are things we have to research there. This brings us to really what you're hopefully not asking for and what a lot of people do ask for. We can't digitize commercial materials and put them up on a streaming server for you to show to your class. It, it's not how it works. We don't have that facility or capacity. It's not how our licenses work. So if there's a, a commercial movie that you really like and you want your students to watch it, we can't digitize it for you. You can't digitize it yourself. You can't put it up online. It's just not what's allowed for. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't, and we don't condone it, and you will, you can frequently get caught. So we recommend that you don't even consider that. There is a streaming service that we do subscribe to called Canopy. Right now, I do believe it only works for faculty members if they're requesting certain films, usually they're documentaries. And I don't think for most of these situations, we're talking usually about pop culture stuff. We're also usually talking about a quantity. So the first thing we do is we make a list. What are the movies I want my students to watch? Then we, were to, we then hypothesize, well, first of all, do we have them? Are they on DVD? Are they on VHS? Are they on Blu-ray? Each of those brings up its scenario. Then we go through and we hypothesize how many hours am I asking my students to watch these materials? Because regardless, you have to account for those hours and then you have to decide how are you going to coordinate this either synchronously or asynchronously. This isn't a new situation. Remembering that there are 15,000 people in the case of Reserve community that can actually borrow something from the library. And frequently on something like video cameras, we might only have six or viewing stations, we only have two or three. So the idea of how we manage these, not just for your class, but for all of the classes or the whole population that has access to these same materials becomes challenging. Things can be put on reserve, but again, you've got to ask yourself how that reserve is going to play out and what happens when the inevitable happens and everyone tries to cram it at the same time. This isn't the end of the conversation, by the way. This is just the beginning. I thought an overview of how you could use commercial videotapes, either in you know ones and twos or across the curriculum, how you can possibly do that as easily as possible. And again, none of it's really easy and it all is about planning. How can you plan and account for the time management and the resource management that we provide for you? After you've viewed this movie and after you've taken a little bit of an assessment of what you desire, what you've got and what you think you can assign, please feel free to reach out to Friedman Center at case.edu for us to consult with you further. That once we understand the scope of your problem and the environment in which we live, both of those can come together and we can see if there's any other questions that we can do to help modify or you know, fix your problem. The bad news is streaming services generally haven't caught up with an accommodation that will make educational environments worthwhile. So anyway, my name is Jared. I hope you find this helpful. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. There's a lot of resources. We just have to manage around those resources to make them work for you.
Anyway, thanks for watching. And remember, Friedman Center at Case at EDU, if you're a faculty member at Case Western Reserve University, we're here to help.